What's up guys? What I wanna talk about today, endurance. Not really my go-to type of training, but I wanna be well-rounded and I wanna be a good coach and I wanna be able to help people out in more than just powerlifting. I wanna share a little bit about fat adaptation and about how to make endurance really easy. It seems like these days most people think endurance takes like some crazy amount of willpower, some crazy amount of training, hours and hours and miles every day day logging in more and more and more higher intensity and I want to break that myth a little bit. Also break the idea that you have to be skinny a week to be a good endurance athlete. I'm fairly muscular. I'm not as muscular as most jacked bros on the internet. I have no thigh gap. I'm definitely not slender but I just did an Ironman, a 70.3 Ironman and I finished in six and a half hours. I only trained for seven weeks. Before that I was competing in a powerlifting event. So I went from a complete opposite style of training and I did fine. The following day, right after doing the Ironman, I drove home. It was a six hour drive. The following day, I did max effort deadlifts. I just wasn't sore, depleted. It just seemed like a relatively low stress event. A couple of the points I want to share with you guys today. One become fat adapted, learn how to burn fat for fuel, and then you have an unlimited supply of fuel on your body. This thing right here, made by the Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, tells you to eat every single carb, 90 grams every hour. Just like automobiles, our bodies require energy to perform. Carbohydrates are the body's preferred fuel source because they can be broken down rapidly and used for energy. Unfortunately, there is not enough storage room in the body for carbohydrates to provide fuel for long periods. To maintain your body's energy levels, you should consume carbohydrates in the form of liquids, solids, or gels. During competition, try to consume simple carbohydrates that are easily digestible, like sports drinks or gels. Avoid heavy doses of fiber, protein. Basically, it just says eat as much sugar as humanly possible during the event. They gave these away, cliff blocks. I saw a lot of people throwing up on the course. There was diarrhea in every single porta potty. Carbohydrates are not the preferred fuel source of the human animal. If they were, then we would be able to store them for long periods of time. We were persistence hunters. We chased large mammals to death, ran behind them until they exhausted themselves, had heat stroke and died. Like that's how good we are at running. Look into Dr. Lieberman's work, or you can read the book Born to Run. Awesome book. This like kind of inspired me to jump jump into endurance running. Persistence hunters, we use fat, we have it all over our body, we have almost an unlimited supply of fat, so we don't need to be shoving carbohydrates down our face. I ate a steak the night before covered in butter. I did have a sweet potato also covered in butter the night before and salt, lots and lots of salt, but I didn't have any simple sugars or carbohydrates during the event, except I did have some UCAN, which is a resistant starch developed by the keto master, Jeff Volick. He's the guy that did the faster study. Looking at that if you're interested in how to do endurance events on fat. The next thing, the 180 method. Train in a heart rate zone of 180 minus your age equals your target heart rate. So I'm 32, 180 minus 32 equals 148. What that does is it keeps you in a fat burning zone. If you go above that, then you start burning sugars. If you're running at a really high intensity, you're gonna burn all your sugars off. You can only store like 1500 grams in your liver and in your muscles. So all these runners out there that are just really pushing themselves every single day, burning all their sugars, and they're just shoving more sugar down their face. So it doesn't make any sense. Glucose is meant to be short, fast, explosive sprints. Get away from the Jaguar fuel. Fat is what we use to hunt down animals over a long period of time. So you gotta keep that heart rate down, you train that fat metabolism. Number three is economic form. The way that you run, the way that your foot hits the ground. I think like probably 80, 90% of the runners I saw, they were just crashing their heels into the ground with every single stride. That's not how humans are meant to run. A lot of people like to heel strike. A lot of people have these huge heels on their shoes that allow them to heel strike. Just basically reach their foot way out in front of them and land way out in front of them and they just crash their heel into the ground and this jolts the whole body. The way that the human is supposed to run on the forefoot or the midfoot, which takes advantage of the elasticity 
of the Achilles tendon and the IT band. So every time you land on your forefoot, you store energy in your Achilles tendon and your calf and in your IT band, which then propels you forward as you take that next stride. So it's very economical. It's almost like a controlled fall the whole time. If you want to learn how to run, take your shoes off and go run barefoot on the street. It's the fastest way to auto-correct your form. Your body just automatically knows how to run barefoot. Perfect form. As you get good at doing that, then you can start putting zero drop minimal flat shoes on. I ran the Long Beach Half Marathon in sandals, flat sandals, that thick. And I was fine. No injuries, no nothing. I recommend this book. This guy is just a legend. Learn how to run like a damn human, not like a robot with frozen hips. The next thing is hydration. Everybody seems to be screwing this up. The recommendations in that little pamphlet, drink as much water as humanly possible. Before the event, during the event, wrong. This is horrible advice. This will deplete you of your electrolytes. The more water you drink, the more of your minerals, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, you just pee them out. You need all those minerals to perform physical work. They're a very crucial part in the cellular processes that happen in making power and getting rid of waste, producing energy. What do you do instead of drinking all the water? I recommend hydrating with salt water, maybe some electrolytes the week before. And then the morning before I, I sipped on some salt water. And then during the race, I sipped on some salt water here and there. The human body is extremely good at maintaining electrolyte balance during endurance work. As you're running and you're sweating, you're releasing all of this water into the atmosphere. Your body and your kidneys keep this perfect balance of electrolytes so that you can continue to do work. People seem to think that it's really bad to lose a lot of water weight. It's not. You can lose pounds of water as long as you maintain that critical electrolyte balance. I wasn't thirsty during the event. I raced for six and a half hours and I didn't really get that thirsty until the end. Stop drinking all the water. Your body knows how to have that balance. First, get hydrated. Get hydrated before you do any endurance events and then allow your body to work with that hydration that you have. Read this book, Dr. Tim Noakes. This is a huge book. It's like a textbook. I read this whole thing. The supplementation. We are the most badass endurance killers on the planet, but it's cool to take advantage of these modern day technologies that we have. These labs are putting out these awesome supplements and these awesome compounds. Got to give a shout out to my all time favorite supplement ever, Perfect Amino. I popped 10 grams of Perfect Amino before the race on an empty stomach. And then I popped another 10 before I started the bike. And then I popped another 10 before I started the run. I'm pretty sure that's why I wasn't sore. I did max effort deadlifts the following day, 99% absorbed. The next thing in line is egg protein, which is 48% absorbed. So you can see how good this is. 32% absorbed meat and poultry, 18% absorbed whey and soy protein, 1% absorbed branch chain amino acids. There's studies done on this product. They gave it to people and then they had them do work and then they tested their pee afterwards and they weren't excreting hardly any of it out, 1% of it. Just repairs your muscles and your working parts as you're running. Vespa, this is a really cool product. This is wasp extract. I think it's an amino acid. There's some royal jelly in here. It's all in Japanese. I don't even know why I'm reading it because I can't read Japanese anyways. I did some research online. Peter Defty, he's involved with this company. It's a catalyst for fat adaptation. So you take it and then it allows you to tap into your fat stores. So it allows you to get really deep into fat burning. So don't use goose, don't use gels, use the fat stored on your fat ass or your hips, anywhere on your body. If you have any questions, if you want me to send you some food guides, if you want me to help you out with your training, give you some tips on how to start an endurance program or a powerlifting program, email me, gabe at ancientgains.com. Keep making those ancient gains. Thanks for watching.